Uh, first of all, we're in election year. Here's the good news. Uh, we're less than a month away from election day. And um, maybe uh, after that, we'll get to some greater degree of normal, if you will. However, uh, retail has been suffering. Uh, it was suffering last year. Uh, we were hit with tariffs, as everybody is painfully um, aware of. And uh, it's been suffering even more this year. Now, one would think some of it has to do with the election, and one would think for sure some of it has to do with uh, COVID. But the reality is for many years, um, the retail community in America has had way too much uh, selling space, way too much square footage per person. We average about 23 square foot per person in America. Uh, and, you know, we have like 325 million people and China with 1.4 billion has two point, maybe three square foot per person. So clearly we've been building too many malls and we've been accumulating too much um, retail square footage. That's been being pared down two years ago. We pared down about 100 million square foot. But uh, what happened with COVID-19, um, it sort of pulled the, the rug out from underneath us and accelerated the process dramatically. So uh, we've been shedding square footage uh, like crazy. Uh, unfortunately, we've been shedding retailers um, equally as well. We are um, at a 10-year high in bankruptcies. If it keeps going the way it's been going, um, we may end up being higher than we were with the Great Recession of um, 2008, 9, and 10. Um, and that's not a good place, but the good news is that um, take the bankruptcy process has been taking about three months, and retailers who've been coming out of it and uh, many have are coming out stronger and healthier and with less square footage. So, you know, it's COVID has been an accelerated process of um, getting rid of our square footage. Uh, and it's, it's sad and it's painful and the job loss in the overall retail community has been enormous. Uh, believe it or not, 483,000 people uh, are out of work in the overall retail, not just, uh, you know, apparel and fashion. But uh, the apparel and fashion has been hit the hardest. You hear on the news uh, consistently that uh, retail in America is up. You know, it's up 11%, it's up 5%. Well, same time it's been going up, uh, clothing and accessories, which is a segment of that, has been going down. We've been averaging down 20 to 24 percent every single month. Well, from a political perspective, um, and President Trump's a little bit uh, like the man of La Mancha. He's like Don Quixote fighting a windmill. He always tends to have some perceived enemy or something that he's fighting against. So he loves to say, on one hand, my good friend, President Xi, and on the other hand, uh, you know, we have an issue with China. So, you know, you have to separate a little bit of fact from fiction. And the, the, the fact is we've been having a problem with intellectual property for years, and everybody's been aware of that. And quite frankly, uh, when uh, I was at AFA, my members had gone to court in in China and they had won. So China was going uh, after the counterfeiting, maybe not as fast as we would like, um, but they have been doing it. Then, you know, there's also transfer of intellectual property. And then his big thing was the trade um, deficit. But the trade deficit is an exercise in, in quite frankly, in, in futility. The great economist Adam Smith always said, do not look at the trade deficit. When business is good, the trade deficit gets worse. And when business is bad, the trade deficit gets better. Yet President Trump decided long time ago to go after the trade deficit. And he figured by putting tariffs on China that um, that would decrease the imports. 
his bad assumption was that exports would remain the same. But quite frankly, every year since he's been president, the exports from China have fallen. So by the second year of the um, his administration, the trade deficit actually got worse. It was $44 billion worse. And these questions are up in the air. Uh, I do believe and I am concerned from a political perspective that um, the China phase one trade deal, which was signed on January 15th of this year at the White House, has not been meeting expectations. Uh, it's uh, woefully behind for a whole host of reasons, but it's still behind what they said, uh, that, you know, what China said they would buy. And um, quite frankly, I think that uh, the Trump administration would, would uh, pull out of the deal, except politically right now that would be a disaster and the stock market would tank. We need China, we need Hong Kong, we need to do business. And um, this whole uh, trade deal has not gone well for, um, for either side, to be honest. Well, uh, again, another difficult question, but you know, in America, the politicians have loved to throw around this phrase of um, decoupling. We're going to decouple from China. Well, you know, anyone who looks at the real numbers fully understands that China is America's number one trading partner. And for brands and retailers in America, not only do we need product from China, remember 40% of all apparel comes from China, 65% of all footwear, 80% of all accessories in America comes from China. It's not healthy for anybody to have this idea of decoupling. And I do think that if um, cooler heads will prevail, perhaps post-election, people uh, could sit around a negotiating table and say, hey, what do you really want from us? What do you want? What are we doing wrong? Let's talk this out. Let's fix it. And let's be good trading partners. First of all, the idea of selling on, uh, on Tmall uh, is a superb idea. What a great way to reach an audience in China and what a safe way to reach an audience in China. Again, part of this goes back uh, to the issue of um, counterfeiting and intellectual property and things that we're all really concerned about in terms of dealing with the China market, particularly with third party sellers on third party websites. However, dealing with something like Tmall, where it's safe and secure and you can set up your own shop, but the idea of going online and reaching people you could never reach is really the future. And you've seen what's happened uh, in America of late. Uh, due to COVID, our stores you know, were closed uh, March, April, some of May. Um, and you know, forced a lot of people online. So we've been running very high numbers online, probably 35, 40% of all purchases have been online for the apparel sector. Now that may tamp down a bit when people start going back to the stores because one of the reasons you go to the stores is you know, you wanna buy a cashmere sweater and you wanna, you wanna feel what the cashmere feels like. So, um, Brick and mortar will survive. Online will be a component of that. And a lot of the future for growth for brands in America will be selling into China. Well, I think um, a lot of that will be determined by who wins the next election. Um, I definitely believe that the Trump administration um, feels very uh, compelled, if you will, to take a hard line on China and we'll continue that and it'll probably ramp it up. As a matter of fact, uh, if they win the election, I do think they may void the China phase one agreement. I also uh, think that um, the, t the tariffs under phase or tranche 4B, which had been sidelined, might uh, reappear. And that would just make everything 
worse, you know, from a from a business perspective. Well, I I would only add that um, you know for years we've been working together, uh, the apparel industry, the footwear industry, the accessories industry with China. We probably have been the best ambassadors in terms of going to China and learning how two uh, countries, uh, two different cultures, two different political governments can work together um, seamlessly. And it was working for both sides, but some would say that it wasn't working as well as it could have. And uh, President uh, Trump has been very forceful about that and wanted to uh, hasten the debate, and he has done that. So we we only can talk about where we are, which I call this the China enigma. Right now, we have uh, politically trouble living with China. That's an enigma, and yet we can't live on a business perspective without China. So we can't live with you, we can't live without you. What are we gonna do? And I think uh, smarter heads will prevail. Eventually we'll be sitting down at the negotiating table and we'll find a way to work together so that um, everybody uh, achieves something that's positive.